If you'd like to support the channel, then be sure to check out our Patreon. Link is in the description. As future Trunks gets ready to go back in time to give Goku the heart medicine, him and his mother begin to research just what kind of threats he could potentially encounter. Bulma tells Trunks everything about the evil Emperor Frieza, how he tortured and killed her friends on Namek, but that Goku defeated him, and later killed him once Frieza returned as a cyborg. She looked sad while reminiscing on the past. Everything about Frieza made him angry. From the sound of it, all these troubles began because of him. Sure, Trunks could save just Goku from the virus. But what if he could prevent all those deaths, all those planets being savaged? Was it fair to just save his own future? What if instead of saving Goku, he saved everyone, all of the Saiyan race, by defeating Frieza? He'd have to do this in secret. His mother would not approve. He began to research just exactly what planet Vegeta was based on his father's belongings. Thus, the day arrived when he was set to be sent away to go back in time, and he waved to his mother from inside the machine. Trunks clicked off the date and made it earlier than it should be, all the way to the time before Goku arrived on Earth all the way to planet Vegeta. Trunks landed on the outskirts of the Saiyan village, where he could hear the small yet bustling townfolk go about their day. It didn't seem to him like they were ruthless or evil like he thought. They were strong, but nowhere near as strong as his master Gohan, and they didn't seem to be able to sense Ki. But just to be safe, he made sure to pack a hood in order to hide his hair. He knew what he needed to do. He needed to find King Vegeta and warn him about Frieza. Trunks quickly burst forward into the castle, a trail of wind behind him. A woman was surprised to feel the push of the wind from her butchery and looked out, but saw nothing. Once inside the castle, Trunks tried to approach the king, but the guards stepped in the way, pulling him back. Trunks didn't want to hurt them, but the king waved them off and said that he could speak. Finally, thank you for the audience, king. I... you don't know me. But I have information. It's Frieza. He will destroy all of planet Vegeta. You have to stop him. King Vegeta laughed. The Frieza force was largely comprised of Saiyans. No way the Emperor would kill off his army over a stupid legend. The King yelled at Trunk to show his face as the guards pulled the hood off his head. The King was disgusted to see a strange alien trying to warn him, especially with a power level of simply two. King Vegeta ordered for him to be kicked out, but in response, Trunks exploded his key, pushing all of the soldiers out of the way as he took steps forward towards the king. Trunks promised that he was just here to help, but the king wouldn't believe it. Instead, he was told that he was a freak and a threat to his reign, just like Paragus and his brat were. In a flash, King Vegeta blasted Trunks. He tanked it, but realized that there was no reasoning with the king. He was blinded by his own ego. Was it a mistake to come back in time? Without anything else to say, Trunks burst out of the castle and back to the woods. He sat down, thinking. Was this really worth it? If the King of All Saiyans was this problematic, how would the rest be? Would they be even worse than Frieza in the long run? There were so many possibilities, a single mistake could ruin the timeline forever. He was conflicted. You made quite a scene back there, said a voice from deep within the woods. Trunks looked between the trees, and a figure made his way through. It was another Saiyan, but it had quite a resemblance to Gohan, with a scar and long spiky hair. Bardock was standing right next to Trunks. You heard that? Everyone heard that. Then, you know what's coming. I had a feeling for some time that something didn't sit quite right. My name's Bardock. Trunks was taken aback. This man looked just like Goku, the man his mother had told him to save. Was he the same person? No, no way. He must just be a child at this point. But the similarities are uncanny. He must be related to him. Bardock turned around and waved to Trunks to follow him, and to put the hood back on. Bardock and Trunks made their way through the Saiyan village, arriving at the butchery Trunks had passed by earlier. There, Bardock was greeted by Gine, his wife. She asked who this young man was, and Bardock said that he was a friend who was just accompanying them for dinner. Trunks tried to argue, but Gine was too enthusiastic to listen. As the night arrived, Bardock, Gine, and Trunks sat around the dinner table. While Gine and Bardock ate savagely, Trunks was a lot more subdued. This made Gine think he didn't enjoy the food, but he was really just too polite and embarrassed. It seemed like things were going nowhere though, and he stood up to excuse himself. But Bardock grabbed him by the arm and shook his head. Trunks, was it? I saw what you did back there. And I believe you. Gine and I were planning on stealing a battle pod for our youngest son, sending him away to a distant planet named Earth. I'm afraid that what you say about Frieza may be true. I at least want him to survive. 
I don't know what you are, or even if you're a Saiyan. I don't care. But if there's a way that you can help us, I promise I will do what I can to help you." Trunks' eyes widened as Bardock moved a curtain off, revealing his young son in the incubator. Gine and Bardock stood by him as Trunks finally realized who he had stumbled into, the parents of Goku, the man he was meant to save. He looks at the hard medicine in his hand, then back at the baby. Should he still give it to him? Uh, questions for later. He had been told time and time again that the Saiyans were an awful race of monsters, but these people were no different than his own friends and family. In fact, Bardock reminded him a lot of his master. These people didn't deserve to die in a genocide. If his task was to save Son Goku, then he would have to save all Saiyans. He Gulped, hoping that his idea of multiverse theory was right. Trunks, determined, stood up, extended his hand out to Bardock, and smiled. He decided he's going to train him and the rest of the Saiyans defend themselves against Frieza. The following day, Bardock brought over to the training fields his old squad mates and a few interested Saiyans. They were fiercely loyal to Bardock, but weren't sure if this kid could really make them better warriors. Trunks began the training, but it was obvious that they weren't taking him seriously. With the possibility of drawing more attention, to himself, he powered up, but not to Super Saiyan. He had to keep that in his back pocket. Once their scouters exploded, that's when Fasha and the rest realized that he was the real deal. Trunks began to reveal many things about Frieza, which he had been told by his mother. The fact that he could transform, the abilities of the Ginyu Force, all valuable information that they had never known before. Eventually, their numbers grew, to the point where the king was alerted to this. He had no choice but to come down to see it himself taking the prince, Nappa, and Raditz along with him, before they were set to go on another mission. Trunks took a step back when he saw the prince. He couldn't believe that this is the first time he sees his father in person. Under these circumstances, Trunks tried to avoid him as much as possible, while Bardock welcomed his son and tried to be nice to the king. But King Vegeta thought it was treason to do this behind his back, and that they had nothing to worry about with Frieza. In fact, the prince could defeat the teenager any day. As the king said this, Prince Vegeta took a step forward, taunting Trunks into attacking, but he didn't move. The king stated that he is shutting down this operation as Prince Vegeta rushed forward and attacked Trunks. Trunks dodged every single attack, not willing to fight his father. This was a problem. What if now he wouldn't exist? What if this was all a mistake? These thoughts made him distracted and allowed the prince to land a punch that actually made Trunks stumble back. Everyone stayed quiet as he could see their hope leaving their eyes. Perhaps what the king said was true, they shouldn't stand up against Frieza. But Trunks couldn't let them lose hope. He thought back to Gohan, how he was the rock keeping him and Bulma from losing their minds. If he wasn't born in this timeline, then that would be okay. Because so many other people would get to live. In that moment, Trunks' hair spiked up, turned golden, his eyes turquoise, and his aura into a flare. None of the Saiyans could believe it, but they could feel the immense heat coming from the kid. This had to be it. This had to be the legend of the Super Saiyan. Bardock smiled. This was the sign of hope they all needed. Meanwhile, the king smirked. His reign was in fact not threatened by this kid. It was bolstered with this Super Saiyan. They could take down Frieza and rule the universe. Prince Vegeta was angry that he wasn't the first one to achieve the legend. Whoever this man was, was a disgrace. No tail, no black hair, just who was he? A low class Saiyan, no doubt. He didn't want to be associated with them, but if it meant getting stronger, then perhaps it would be worth it. I will train you to fight Frieza and his army, but I will not do it for you. If I am risking the time flow, it will be to guarantee the safety of all of you in the future, so you can't rely on me. Every Everyone was confused by that timeline comment, but it didn't matter. They all agreed this was their next step forward. Trunks only hoped that he would get stronger as well, as only then would he return to the future and defeat the androids once and for all. The training was intense, especially once the Saiyans realized that Trunks could sense energy without the need of a scouter. This gave him a huge advantage, and slowly the Saiyans began to pick this up as well. From what he was told, the Saiyans were given a month to return to planet Vegeta. Trunks thought he had all that time left, but word did eventually make it to Frieza about this little rebellion. The day came during training when a dark shadow loomed over planet Vegeta. King Vegeta's eyes widened as he knew Frieza had arrived. He told Trunks not to worry, that he'd take care of it. Him and the elite went up to greet Frieza, kneeling before the Emperor, but a death beam came straight through the king's shoulder, narrowly missing his vital organs. 
to make him suffer. Frieza was angry and was going to make it everyone's problem. Frieza said that he was well aware of the little rebellion and he was going to put an end to it. He knew the king was a weasel and lifted him up asking who was responsible for this. Before the king could answer, two blasts hit Dodoria and Zarbon, knocking them back. Frieza's eyes widened as he looked up to see the prince and Bardock alongside a small army of Saiyans. None of them had scouters. No wonder they didn't get detected on their way up. The fight quickly ramped up as some Saiyans took care of the hurt king. Frieza directed Zarbon, Dodoria and the Ginyu Force, as well as the rest of the army to fight. Thanks to Trunks' instructions, the Saiyans were able to actually be a force to be reckoned with. They were still on the losing end, but slowly started to push back against the evildoers. Prince Vegeta in particular was savage and easily defeated Zarbon and Goldo. Trunks watched from the distance, excited to see the fruits of his labor, but the screams of Prince Vegeta made him worry. Frieza had transformed into his third form to instill fear in the hearts of the enemy. A huge explosion rocked everything, and as the smoke cleared, many Saiyans laid unconscious. The prince, Bardock, and his squad still stood defiantly as the remainders of the Ginyu Force and Frieza laughed. Screams and cries continued, and Trunks knew that he would have to break his promise of not intervening. He cursed and jumped into the scene. Bardock, Vegeta, deal with the Ginyu Force. I'll help with Frieza. Trunks rushed in at Frieza, instantly surprising him with his speed and strength, to which he was forced to turn into his final form. The Ginyu Force fought against the small army, but came at the help of Frieza. Trunks opened his aura and sent both Jais and Birder flying out. Ginyu tried to switch bodies with him, but Trunks had heard of that technique. He grabbed a hold of Kui and threw him at the beam, to which Vegeta and Bardock blasted the them both, killing them. Frieza couldn't believe that he was actually losing. How could this be? In a moment of desperation, he flew upwards to outside the atmosphere. Trunks told them that this was their chance, and all the Saiyans rushed upwards. Frieza quickly turned back around to fire a giant death ball at the crew. The Saiyans knew they couldn't defend themselves against it, and without much of a choice, Trunks transformed into a Super Saiyan to pick up the death ball and throw it up to a faraway star. Frieza was in disbelief. The legend he feared had come true. This was the Super Saiyan that would spell his end. Trunks got ready to attack as Frieza freaked out and obtained 100% power. But Bardock placed the hand on Trunks' shoulder. He told him that he had done so much for the Saiyans already. This time, it was their turn to defend themselves. Trunks was speechless, but nodded and de-transformed. The king commanded everyone to attack. Frieza was defending himself well, but he was in so much distress that he was getting sloppy. In anger, Frieza exploded his key, causing every Saiyan to be extremely damaged. Panting, Bardock tried to stand up to Frieza still, but to Trunks, it seemed like it was over. Bardock, maybe changing the future was not the right choice, but we'll make sure to do right by you in the future. As Trunks said this, Bardock's heart sank. He could see something. A vision? Maybe just his key sensing advancing and helping him see something beyond. He wasn't sure, but in Trunks' eyes, he could see those same Super Saiyan eyes in a man facing off against Frieza. The eyes of a man who finally sliced him in two. But that vision changed into a dark one as he watched Frieza fire a death beam straight through Trunks and finally destroying the planet. No, no, he couldn't allow that to happen. Bardock snapped out of it, his vision clearing as he rushed and pushed Trunks out of the way being hit straight in the chest with the death beam meant for Trunks. Trunks' eyes widened as he watched Bardock slowly descend down to the planet, leading with Trunks to kill Frieza. In an instant, everything went dark for Trunks. A huge explosion of key woke up the unconscious Saiyans as Trunks reached a transformation even further beyond. Super Saiyan 2. He wasn't going to allow any other person he cared about to die. Without even looking, he took Bardock's hand and said, Come on, Bardock. It's not over yet. Almost as of a miracle. Bardock himself was engulfed by the golden light as his hair changed into that of a Super Saiyan, the first true Super Saiyan in the millennia in this timeline. Frieza took a step back. Gine cheered for her husband, as did all the Saiyans. Even the prince himself couldn't help but do so. Bardock and Trunks stood side by side and were then joined by the prince, the king, Gine, and many others. In unison, the team fired one huge blue blast at Frieza as he fired his own death ball. As the death ball began to be pushed back, Trunks let go of the attack, stepping back, letting Bardock and the rest of the Saiyans save their future. With Frieza gone, Trunks smiled at planet Vegeta before saying, There. Gohan, 
Mom, I did it. I saved Son Goku. As Trunks smiled, Bardock put his arm around him. He asked what his plans were now. Trunks thought about it and said that he was supposed to return home, but he hasn't gotten strong enough to defeat the androids just yet. Perhaps he could stay a little longer, train, improve his skills, and learn new techniques. Bardock said that he was more than welcome to stay with him. The various Saiyans all cheered as the king declared a grand banquet for the whole team. But from behind everyone, Prince Vegeta stared at Bardock and Trunks. He was insulted. The first Super Saiyan was a low-class warrior. He was no longer the strongest. He would defeat him and prove who the ultimate Saiyan was. Vegeta looked at his father, who nodded with a smirk. His empire had just begun. The Saiyans roared in cheers as meat, music, and alcohol was passed around the village. Frieza had been defeated by not one but two Super Saiyans of legend. The Saiyan rays were enjoying a massive celebration, excited to be free from their servitude. Gine and the rest of the butchers in her village prepared a large feast as Trunks and Bardock happily ate. During the meal, Trunks wondered if he should stay a little bit longer. Did he really need to keep training here, or was he just being selfish? Suddenly, Trunks was pulled in by various members of the Bardock squad, each one congratulating him and asking him to show them that trick for getting Super Saiyan ASAP. Trunks smiled nervously, but he decides to stay a little bit longer, at least until the Saiyans got strong enough to take care of themselves. Over the next few weeks, Saiyan society rebuilds as Trunks continues to train the Saiyans. Bardock and Trunks are treated like heroes by the low class, constantly getting approached with gifts, challenges, and requests to show off Super Saiyan. Several middle class and even a few elites approach the pair taunting them to battle and asking for special training. Trunks nervously accepts most requests, but Bardock would yell at the gawkers to get lost. Yet, there were a few things that bothered Trunks. It had been weeks since he saw Prince Vegeta. Shortly after the celebration, Vegeta and his team were quickly sent off to a mission before Trunks could even approach him. He notices that the king was sending soldiers to hunt down the remnants of the Frieza force. King Vegeta and the elite claim that this is the only way to truly be free from the shadow of Frieza. Trunks isn't sure about this, wondering if the king may have ulterior motives for sending so many troops out into space. Bardock had similar suspicions, voicing his concerns to Trunks and Gine. The elites were up to something. He could feel it. Eventually, Bardock and his squad are assigned a mission to eliminate a Frieza Force outpost on a far-off planet. Bardock is worried about leaving, but Gine reassures him that she'll be fine, especially if she has Trunks around to keep her shop safe. Trunks nods, promising Bardock that he'd stay to protect his family while he's gone. Trunks kept his word, staying in the village and learning more about Saiyan culture from Gine. He was surprised to learn that not every Saiyan was a warrior. There were engineers, scientists, butchers, and many other occupations in Saiyan society. Trunks thought back to his Earth, wondering if his mother was doing well. He couldn't forget his mission, to save the future. Some more time passes. One day, Trunks is at Gine's butcher shop, playing with little Kakarot, when he is suddenly attacked. A sniper shot from far away nearly struck Trunks in a vital point, but he sensed the incoming attack and barely managed to dodge it. Trunks tells Gine to grab Kakarot and hide, bursting his key out and chasing down the sniper who was jumping across various buildings. Trunks confronts the sniper, shocked to see a young boy was the assailant. He had green hair and two different colored eyes, one red and one blue. Before Trunks could ask why he had attacked him, the mysterious boy strikes. He shot several more key attacks aimed directly at Trunks' vital points, but his guard was up. He was able to deflect the blast with only his finger. As the boy tries to throw a punch, Trunks suddenly appears behind him as he grabs his arm, trapping him in a hold. Who are you? Why are you attacking me? Get off of me, you stupid Saiyan scum! No, no. It's best to surrender when your opponent is vastly more powerful than you. Stand down. Huh? A group of aliens appear before Trunks, introducing themselves as the Heaters. This was simply a test to see if the power of the Super Saiyan was as astonishing as they've heard. They congratulated Trunks for being able to defeat their best mercenary so easily. His skills really weren't a lie. He was the real deal. The Heaters explained that they have valuable intel regarding Frieza's father, King Cold. He was alive and still invading planets. In fact, their intel indicates that a peaceful planet, Serial, is the next planet the king will be attempting to conquer. They plead to Trunks, asking if the legendary Super Saiyan could defeat King Cold as he did Frieza. Trunks naively agrees as he enters the heater's ship with them and the sniping mercenary. Trunks waves goodbye to Gine and Kakarot, telling them that he'll be back. During the trip to Planet Serial, Trunks notices the boy hates his guts. He tries his best to get close to him, but his initial attempts result in failure. The kid would simply curse at him, 
shooting at his vital points and running away. Eventually, Trunks' attempts to get close work, as one day, the boy approaches him, asking how he was able to find him back on planet Vegeta. Trunks says that he won't say anything until he learns this boy's name, as the boy mutters a single word, Granola. Eventually, the two start a bond, as Trunks and Granola share stories about their past. They bond over both being the last survivors of their respective people. Although Trunks doesn't reveal that he's a time traveler, Granola reminds Trunks so much of himself, Gohan, angry, resentful, and lonely. Trunks gives Granola a deal. If he trains him, giving him a few pointers and teaching him the tricks to how he found him earlier, then Granola has to promise to stop shooting at him. The kid agrees, and their training begins. As the space trip continues, the two become close. Granola manages to pick up key control rather quickly, learning how to sense key and eventually fly. Trunks was filled with nostalgia, remembering his first time flying and how Gohan was the one who taught him it. For the first time since they've met, Granola smiles in delight as he excitedly yells at Trunks to see how fast he can fly. However, this catches the attention of the heaters. Oil and Mackie wonder if this will be an issue, but Alec reassures them that it'll be fine if Granola dies with them. What's losing a single mercenary in exchange for universal domination? Meanwhile, back on planet Vegeta, Bardock returns home from his mission fighting against the Frieza Force remnants. Bardock asks Kine where Trunks is and, when she tells him that he went with a group called the Heaters, he panics. Bardock knows the Heaters can't be trusted. He yells at Gine to tell him where they went, immediately getting back into a space pod and heading off into Planet Serial. Soon enough, Trunks' group arrives on Planet Serial. According to the Heaters' intel, King Cold's army would arrive within a few hours, so they had some free time until then. Granola looks over at Trunks, asking him if he'd like to see his home. He takes Trunks to his house, on the outskirts of the city where Monaito was waiting. Monaito is glad to see Granola finally has a friend. Granola excitedly he tells Monaito everything he learned on the trip back, talking and talking until he got tired and fell asleep. Monaito chuckles, thanking Trunks for spending so much time with Granola. He hadn't seen him this happy in some time. A long time ago, his mother and the rest of his people were massacred by the Saiyans right in front of his eyes. The trauma he experienced has left his heart shattered and closed. Yet, he was able to make a friend, and with a Saiyan no less. Monaito requests that Trunks promise to stay friends with Granola. Trunks accepts as he looks at Monaito more closely. He thinks to himself that he appears to match the description of Gohan's old master. Piccolo. He must be a Namekian, isn't he? Does this mean he has Dragon Balls? However, as Trunks is about to ask this question, they bolt up. They had sensed it. King Cold and his army were here. Trunks wakes up Granola as they exit the building. They look up to the sky as they see a massive mothership floating overhead. The ship descends, and from within it, a massive hulking figure steps out wearing a cape. The resemblance to Frieza was uncanny. This had to be King Cold. The monarch introduces himself, stating that he was glad to find meet the so-called Super Saiyan that killed his son. He needed to pay. King Cold outstretched his arm, ordering his soldiers to attack. Trunks pulls out his sword, ready to strike, but a volley of key blast whizzed past him as they strike the soldiers. Granola yells out to Trunks to take care of Cold. He'd handle the small fry. Trunks gives him a thumbs up, dashing over to the king and performing a roundhouse kick. Yet, King Cold manages to block the attack. As the two exchange blows, Trunks is surprised to see the king actually do so well against them in battle. He didn't think he was able to be this strong. Trunks burst into Super Saiyan, his golden hair spiking up. Yet, this doesn't seem to face King Cold. In fact, he mentions how he doesn't find this legendary form to be that impressive. He asks Trunks to get serious and show him his real power. The power that killed his son. Once again, Trunks is stunned. King Cold was even aware of this new Super Saiyan 2. Trunks starts to wonder if someone informed him about his abilities. As the battle intensifies, Trunks and King Cold clash their fist, landing punches over and over before jumping back, each of them firing a key beam, clashing in the middle. However, as the beam push against each other, a third key blast crashes against them, pushing both of them back. Bardock. Trunks yells at Bardock, what was he doing there? Bardock barks back, asking Trunks and King Cold why they're here. Trunks says that he's here to stop King Cold from conquering the planet, but King Cold finds that amusing. He was told that the Super Saiyans were going to conquer this planet, one that already belonged to his empire. Trunks is left confused, but Bardock explains that they were being played by the heaters. The only things those crooks care about is manipulating others to do what they want. Right on cue, the heaters arrive with an injured Monaito. Elec claps his hands, congratulating them for finally using their brains. Yet, it doesn't matter anymore. Thanks to this Namekian and his little trinkets, 
no one would be able to stop them now. Granola's eyes widen, screaming to leave Monaito alone. He tries to save him, but he's kicked back by a powered up gas. The heaters had used the Cerulean Dragon Balls to give gas the strength to surpass Super Saiyans. Trunks grits his teeth. His suspicions were right. Monaito really did have his own set of Dragon Balls. Elig reveals his plan. He manipulated the Super Saiyan and King Cold to battle each other, so they would have to kill one another, leaving himself and his family as the ones left to conquer the universe. Yet, now that their plan was revealed, it was time to use their backup plan, using the Cerulean Dragon Balls to empower Gas and simply kill them themselves. Elix smiles, glad to know that the Saiyan that eluded them so many years ago would also die here. It was if fate was on their side. Bardock yells at Trunks to go all out, both of them powering up as they charge at Gas. They manage to deal considerable amount of damage, which surprises Elec. Thanks to the presence of Bardock, Gas is scared to fight back. However, a pep talk from Elec causes Gas to break through his fear and control his Berserk transformation. Gas nearly kills Bardock, aiming to stab him in the chest with a key sword, but he is blasted from behind by King Cold. He would not allow anyone else to kill what was rightfully his kill. Trunks jumps in, his key soaring, and and unleashing Super Saiyan 2. He hates to admit it, but he needs King Cold's help if he wants to survive this time. The Monarch proposes a temporary truce with Trunks, reluctantly accepting. As Trunks and Cold hold off gas, Monaito heads over to Bardock and starts to heal him. Granola wakes up, seeing Trunks struggling against gas. He attempts to fire several key shots towards his vital points, but gas sees it coming, creating a massive train made of key and slamming it into the child. Trunks is enraged. The boy had gone through so much he would never forgive Gas. Bardock yells at Trunks to stop holding back and embrace his Saiyan nature to fight like a Saiyan. Stop thinking so much and fight like you mean it! Trunks allows his rage to empower him, his eyes widening out as he pummels Gas. Trunks was finally starting to win. Elec fires his pistol, aiming directly at Trunks, but the blast is smacked away by Bardock. His blood was pumping, his anger was rising. He wanted to join in the battle, he wanted to be the one to defeat Gas. But more than that, he wouldn't allow the heaters to pull any dirty tricks or kill anyone else like they did with Granola's mother. He wakes up, his key erupting, pushing back Elec, Oil, and Maki as Bardock obtains Super Saiyan 2. Bardock dashes over to Trunks, punching Gas square in the jaw and sending them flying. If they want to beat Gas, they need to place all their power into a single attack. King Cold walks up to them, declaring that he'll be the only one doing any killing here. Through teamwork, the trio deal a massive amount of damage to Gas, blasting him with a combined energy blast. At first, they think Gas was defeated, as all they see is a rotting corpse. Yet, Gas manages to stand up, ready to continue the fight. Bardock, Trunks, and Cold get into the battle stance, readying themselves, until they see something that makes them stop dead in their tracks. They can't believe what they're seeing, trembling as their mouth drops. At first, Gas thinks that his opponents are terrified of him, until a loud thud is heard behind them. Before Gas can even turn around, a figure immediately lunges towards him, landing a single fatal punch. Trunks and Bardock are utterly flabbergasted. Was this Frieza? King Cole stepped forward, shaking in admiration and fear. This wasn't Frieza, this was his eldest son, Cooler. Trunks doesn't understand what he's hearing, he was never told that Frieza had any brothers. Perhaps this was a consequence of his time traveling, creating a time anomaly. King Cole thanks his son for arriving to take care of the bothersome heaters. Now that he was there, their clan would reclaim the title as rulers of the universe. Cooler merely looks at his father, before eyeing Bardock and Trunks. Cooler reveals that he was busy conquering the South Galaxy when he heard the news of his little brother's death at the hands of two Super Saiyans. Cooler had returned in order to take revenge on those who brought such shame to his clan. And this included his failure of a father, who would stoop as low as partnering with filthy Saiyans. King Cold's eyes widened as he attempted to bargain for his life, but it was futile. Cooler viewed his father's decision to work with the Saiyans as a dishonor, which only death was a fitting punishment for. In a single move, Cooler slapped his father so hard that it snapped his neck. Cooler calls out Elec, who is attempting to retreat with the other heaters. Understanding that he can't escape, Elec demands to know how it's possible that he can defeat Gas. Cooler simply says that he's far stronger than a mere Super Saiyan, suddenly appearing in front of Elec and killing him with a point blank key blast. Mackie and Oil are left standing there, frozen in fear. Cooler faces the Super Saiyans as he bulks up into his final form, his fifth 
state. Trunks and Bardock are shocked at how strange he is. They charge their key to the max, electricity firing violently through their auras. It's worthless. In a single strike, Trunks and Bardock are immediately incapacitated. This cooler is far stronger than the one we know from the original movie, as he has been displaced through time and space thanks to Trunks changing reality. Cooler laughs triumphantly, declaring that he's disappointed at the strength of those so-called Super Saiyans of legend. Cooler rises up, repairing a supernova to destroy the planet, a single spaceship rocketing to the battle site. The newly healed Granola had summoned his own spaceship piloted by his AI assistant Oatmeal to rescue them. He had his ship on standby in case of an emergency. Granola holds onto Monaito and Trunks as Bardock in a split-second decision pulls in Oil and Maki on board. The ship narrowly escapes Planet Serial's destruction as a massive flash consumes the world. In the space where Planet Serial once stood, Cooler sees a spaceship blink out of sight as he vows to finish what his brother started and kill the Saiyan once and for all. Out in space, Trunks wakes up as Monaito finishes healing him. Trunks thanks him for saving him, and Granola states that it was nothing. Oatmeal did the actual rescuing. Trunks thanks Oatmeal for his assistance, and Granola stares down at Oil and Maki. He asks Bardock why he saved that scum, but Bardock growls. Oil and Maki beg for their lives, offering to do whatever they want as Monaito tells everyone to calm down. At the same time, in a large castle, King Vegeta is sitting comfortably on his throne. When a small Saiyan enters the chamber, the king grants his son the permission to speak, as Prince Vegeta informs his father that the mission was a success. As Prince Vegeta orders Raditz and Nappa to bring him in, a young boy is brought before the king, who asks for his name. He looks up at the king, muttering a single word, Broly. After spending some time traveling through the galaxy, a single spaceship approaches the planet. Oatmeal announces to its occupants that they have arrived at their destination, Planet Vegeta. As the ship lands, Granola instructs Oatmeal to cloak the ship and wait for further instructions. The group heads to Gine's butcher shop. Gine is excited to see her husband once more, and she asks if he found trunks yet, but then she sees the dejected looks on everyone's faces. She goes up to Bardock, holding him and asking what's wrong. Who were these people? What happened to Planet Serial? Bardock takes a deep breath and he asks Gine to sit down. It's a long story. Inside their home, Bardock and Trunks do their best to explain what happened. After they finished, Gine had her hands on her mouth. Those poor Cerulians. And Cooler had returned? Does this mean that the Saiyans are going to be enslaved again? Bardock slams his fist against the wall. He never allowed that to happen again. He spins his head, staring at the nervous Oil and Maki. If it wasn't for the heaters, none of this would have happened. He shouldn't have saved them. They should have perished. Bardock approaches the terrified heaters, but Trunks stands in front of them. He tells the Saiyan to calm down and let it go. Elec was the real mastermind anyways. Getting rid of these two won't change anything. Gine approaches Bardock with a stern look on her face. She wouldn't allow any fights in her house. Oil and Maki are scared but glad that they are alive. For now, the remaining heaters, Granola and Monaito, stay with Gine, while they figure out what to do next. During their stay, Oil and Maki volunteer to help Gine with butchering meat, while Monaito and Granola look after Kakarot. Days pass, and news of Planet Serial's destruction came Cole's death and the return of Cooler spread through the village like wildfire. Fear and uncertainty hangs heavy in the air. How long would they be free for? Trunks and Bardock see the terror and doubt on people's faces. It was a stark contrast to the looks of jubilation and excitement everyone had after Frieza's defeat. When Bardock and Trunks return home from gathering intel about Cooler, they return to find Granola playing with little Kakarot. As Trunks and Bardock sit down to unwind, Granola approaches Bardock. He tells him that he's sorry. Bardock is confused at first, but Granola explains that he heard about what happened to his people and his mother from Monaito. He harbored an intense grudge against the Saiyans for such a long time and blamed Bardock for killing his mother, but he was wrong. Bardock remains quiet for a bit before he closes his eyes. He apologizes for not being strong enough to save his mother. If he wants to honor his mother now and his people, the best thing he can do is simply survive and live a good, long life. Granola and Bardock smile as Trunks looks on proudly. The young boy had come far already. Monaito realizes that this kid really can be trusted and approaches him slowly. He had been able to get the Dragon Balls the heaters used on gas before the planet exploded. Remember, these Dragon Balls don't turn into stone like the usual ones. He asks if they could use these to defeat Cooler. Trunks thinks it's possible and thanks him for doing it, but that his mission right now is to teach the Saiyans to defend themselves. They will keep the Dragon Balls around just in case. But as he learned the hard way in the future, you can't rely on them. 
However, not long after that, several guards approach Gine's shop as they announce that the Super Saiyans have been summoned. They were to meet the king immediately. Gine is worried, but Bardock tells her that it'll be fine. He goes in for a hug, which catches Gine off guard, but Bardock whispers in her ear to stay on guard and protect Kakarot. Without another word, Trunks and Bardock leave. Soon, the pair arrive at the castle and enter the throne room. King Vegeta welcomes the Super Saiyans, congratulating them once again for defeating Frieza and liberating their people. The king states that they must have heard rumors by now. Cooler has returned, and his presence threatens everything the Saiyans have come to work for. It was time for the Saiyan race to stand together, united against this new threat. Trunks stays quiet as Bardock questions why the king is suddenly so willing to stand by his brethren. He no longer care about the caste system. King Vegeta chuckles, claiming that something like that doesn't matter anymore in the face of this greater enemy. You two have proven to me the potential of the Saiyans are limitless. More than that, it is our birthright, our destiny to rule. We will overcome, Cooler. And when we have wiped out this final thorn from our side, we will be able to conquer the universe without any worries. What? That's crazy. I only ever fought because I wanted a good fight. I'm sick and tiring of conquering worlds. Frieza's gone now. We don't have to go back to that life anymore. Bardock's right. This is a huge mistake. Please, my king, reconsider this madness. We'll be more than glad to lend a hand, but we won't be taking over anyone. This is a disappointment to hear. I had hoped you two out of everybody would understand my vision for our people. I was wrong. You both are not the real Super Saiyan of legend, merely false prophets. I thank you for defeating Frieza, so I will grant you some mercy. Your execution will be swift and painless. Guards, take the traitors. Several guards surround the pair, as Bardock tells everyone to stand down if they know what's better for them. Did they really think they could take out two pairs of Super Saiyans? A purple flash of light suddenly flies past the guards as Trunks barely has time to slap the blast away. The side of the castle is blown apart as Prince Vegeta appears with a smug grin and a golden aura. It's finally time to prove the power of a super elite. Trunks tells the prince to stop, but his pleas fall on deaf ears. He clashes with Trunks, eager to prove himself to the Super Saiyans. Bardock fights off the guards with relative ease, but as he attempts to assist Trunks, King Vegeta erupts his own power, enveloped by a golden aura. Just like his son, King Vegeta dashes forward with an elbow strike. Bardock catches it as the king declares that he wants to experience his power for himself. Bardock rits his teeth. He never could have expected the king and his son to unlock the power of Super Saiyan so quickly. The king chuckles. Of course they would achieve the legend. They're the strongest of the elite. Bardock and Trunks battle against the royal guards, limiting themselves as to not accidentally kill anyone. Trunks decides to end this madness, bursting into Super Saiyan as his aura pushes back the prince. Trunks demands that everyone ceases fighting. They need to work together against Cooler. However, King Vegeta grins as he says that the weak cannot control the demands of the strong. Trunks' eyes widen, sensing a massive power and turning around to see just a little boy. Broly, these are our enemies. They dare to threaten your king. Attack. Trunks blocks the incoming punch from Broly, and the resulting shockwave shakes the entire castle. Bardock and Trunks' eyes widened. This power was unreal. Bardock attempts to help, but he's stopped dead in his tracks by the king and the prince. Without much of a choice, Bardock turns into Super Saiyan, cracking his knuckles and saying that he's more than happy to take both of them on. Although Bardock is able to beat back the Vegetas, Trunks is having a hard time against Broly. Even without Super Saiyan, this boy was strong enough to contend against the powerful Super Saiyan too. Not only that, with each attack Trunks launched, it seemed like Broly was learning as he fought. Trunks was able to grab Broly and spin him into the throne. Ultimately, this only served to anger Broly even more, his rage soaring to the sky. More and more guards enter the throne, with Trunks and Bardock looking at each other. They had no option, they had to retreat. 
there will only be more casualties. Trunks screams at Bardock to close his eyes. As he says, Solar Flare! A bright light consumes the castle, giving them enough time to retreat. They knew it now. They were criminals, wanted by the same race. Trunks and Bardock quickly made their way home, shutting the doors behind them and telling everyone to pack their belongings. The heaters were confused about what's going on. Bardock says that they won't have time to focus on defeating Cooler if they're busy fighting the rest of the Saiyan race. As Gina and Monaito pack supplies, Granola messages Oatmeal and his race of communicator. They couldn't risk bringing the ship to the village. Instead, he commanded it to the forest. They all rush out, escaping into the forest. They arrive to a clearing where the ship had been waiting, decloaking as Trunks and Granola place their friends inside. But a voice echoes in the forest, demanding them to stop right there. Raditz. Bardock damns the world. He knew his son was crafty, but he wasn't expecting him to have anticipated their plans. Raditz tells his father to give up. The Saiyan army are already on their way. They should simply join their side and follow their Saiyan instincts. They were meant to rule. Bardock barks at his son, telling him that Saiyans aren't destined to be killers. They could make a new path for themselves. Raditz squints, saying that the prince was right. His father had gone soft. Saiyans swarm the forest as Strunks and Bardock yell at Granola to go in with everyone else. Protect the ship no matter what. Their key explodes into Super Saiyan 2. The massive increase of power causes scouters of every single Saiyan in the forest to explode as the king arrives, bursting into Super Saiyan as well and commanding his army to attack. The forest descends into a war zone as dozens of key blasts shoot down. Trunks deflects as many as he can, but as the forest is set ablaze, Bardock realizes that there's nothing they can do. The prince soon arrives with Nappa and Broly to support Raditz. Though Nappa, Raditz, and the prince were simply annoyances, Broly was a huge problem. Bardock manages to push them all back for just long enough to turn around and tend Trunks to get away. Trunks had just finished defeating the king with a powerful strike. He wanted to protect his friend and help him out. Bardock looks to the sky in surprise. He was sensing the key of others. Tora, Fasha, Shugesh, and the rest of Bardock's squad had arrived. They stand behind Bardock and asks if he needs a hand. Bardock smiles, and Fasha nods at him. They were a squad, and they fought together no matter what. Bardock insists on Trunks leaving. You need to get out of here, kid. My squad and I will protect the ship. But I can't just leave you guys. If you get caught now, then there will really be nobody to save the future Saiyans. Escape and live. Your only hope. Promise me you'll keep Gine and Kakarot safe, and then run to Granola too. Promise me. Ah, uh, of course. That's what I'm here for. Glad to hear it. I'm betting everything on you. Now go, because this is gonna change everything! Granola's ship blasts off as the Bardock squad was the last stand against the Saiyan army, but they're slowly and ultimately defeated. Bardock had to run out of power, exhausted from the ongoing slot and a final headbutt from Broly. Nappa walks up to the king, requesting orders. King Vegeta pauses for a moment, declaring that despite their insubordinance, they are still incredibly powerful. These five Saiyans alone are worth a thousand others. They would prove to be useful in the incoming war against the cooler forces. They shall be placed in a dungeon, and equipped with shock collars similar to Broly. King Vegeta turns around, nearly slapping Bardock in the face with his cloak. The age of the Saiyans was finally upon them. Far away, deep into space, a lone ship hovers in the black void. Trunks, Kine, Kakarot, Granola, Monaito, and the Heaters escaped planet Vegeta. But at what cost? Granola turns to Trunks, asking where they're going now. The young Saiyan says a simple word, home. On a peaceful, blue and green planet, an old man is outside of his laboratory, taking a smoke break when a large ship descends from the sky and lands nearby, with the old man immediately noticing the Capsule Corp logo on the teenager's jacket, welcoming him and asking him if he was a fan of his company. Trunks' eyes widened. This must be his grandfather. He panics, stuttering as he replies yes, he's a huge fan of Capsule Corp. His mom used to work there. The old man chuckles. She must have been a real smart lady to build a ship like that. He notices the rest of the ship's occupants and how exhausted they all are. He introduces himself as Dr. Briefs and invites everyone inside to rest. Maybe he could even take a look at the ship. Trunks is surprised to see how willing he is to help strangers, let alone space aliens. But Briefs says that his family is well acquainted with aliens. Trunks smiles, thinking him 
and taking the offer. As he looks at the damaged ship, his wife brings cookies to the tired travelers. While the heaters and granola fight over some cookies, Trunks stares intently at the scientist and his wife. He eyed the couple curiously. He never knew his grandparents, but he saw pictures of them, and his mother would often talk about them fondly. His mother? Could she be here too? Sure enough, Trunks hears a gasp as he turns around to see a little girl looking in amazement at the spaceship. The blue hair and that look in her eyes. When she sees something exciting, there was no doubt about it, that was Bulma. Trunks nearly cries, but he manages to hold back emotions as he looks around. This city was so colorful and bright, nothing like the West City he knew in his timeline. Trunks looked down at his feet in silence and melancholy. He only wanted to save Son Goku and the Saiyans, yet all he's done is cause far more damage to this timeline. He was able to defeat Frieza, but not cooler than even that little boy Broly. He failed to stop King Vegeta, he failed to save Bardock. Had he finally failed his mission? Were the Saiyans fate to die? Seeing how distraught Trunks was, the little Bulma walks up to him and asks if he's okay. Trunks tries to say that he's fine, but even as a kid, Bulma doesn't buy it. He admits that he's feeling a little down because he messed some things up big time. Bulma thinks for a minute and says nonchalantly that she messes up all the time, especially with her experiments. But her mom and dad tell her that it's fine. They say that as long as you never give up, you can always figure out a way to make things better. Trunks' eyes widened, thinking back to his own mother and how she would tell him the same thing. No matter what age it is, you always know what to say. You're right, I shouldn't be sitting here sulking. Not when there's still a chance. <sighs> Thanks, mom. <clears throat> Bulma, I really needed to hear that. More than you know. Trunks is renewed with determination. He will never give up. There's always hope to be left. Hope is the last thing that's lost. As the briefs continue fixing their spaceship, Trunks trains Granola a little bit further. He encourages the kid, saying that even if they fail again, as long as they survive, there will always be hope to keep fighting. Trunks also further refines Super Saiyan 2, knowing there's a power beyond it, but doesn't understand how to tap into it just yet. Some time passes, and it's as Panchi teaches Gine at the heaters how to bake that Dr. Briefs announces the spaceship had been repaired. Trunks walks inside and sees a cruelly drawn hope on the side. Boma puffs her chest, saying that she was the one to draw it. Everything had been fixed, even Oatmeal's AI, and that same AI warns them of something. After decrypting several messages, Oatmeal discovered Cooler's plan to invade planet Vegeta and eliminate the Saiyans once and for all. In fact, Cooler's armada was headed to the planet this very moment. It was going to be an all-out war. Everyone's stunned, and they all turn to Trunks. He says that he's going to stop Cooler once and for all, by himself. However, Granola Monaito Gine and even the heaters refuse. They want to help Trunks and save Bardock, and they won't take no for an answer. The heaters simply say that they want revenge on Cooler for killing Elegant Gas. And, well, they did save their lives twice now. It was time to return the favor. Trunks smiles proudly, reassuring them that he won't be going alone. This wouldn't be like when he fought the androids. He'll have allies to support him. They couldn't afford to lose. Gine asks the briefs to take care of little Kakarot and they happily agree. They'll be waiting here for them to return. Trunks tells everyone to get on board. They have a war to win. Before they leave, Dr. Briefs whispers to Trunks, reminding him not to forget about their little chat. It'd do him well to meet his old friend. Trunks shoots him a thumbs up, telling him he's on it. The Briefs cheer on the heroes as they blast off, Panchi making Kakarot wave a cheerful goodbye. On planet Vegeta, the entire Saiyan race prepares for war. For the past several weeks, the king had been organizing his people, gathering his troops, supplies and ships. He had planned for his army to deploy soon so they could invade Cooler's throne world. The king commanded Bardock to train his army into Super Saiyans. Though he refused, his shock color told him otherwise. Despite the ruthless training, the results didn't impress the king. Out of the entire Saiyan army, only Bardock's squadmates, Raditz and Nappa, had managed to unlock Super Saiyan. The king was displeased but not surprised. At the very least, they had managed to increase the amount of Super Saiyans under his control, with his son leading the elite squad and himself commanding the Saiyan army. In the worst case scenario, Broly should be enough to deal with Cooler. There was only one issue, he kept asking for his father, Paragus. Although the king maintains that Paragus is busy on another mission, Broly was becoming more restless. He was asking questions, and it wouldn't be long until he demanded answers. Perhaps it was a blessing in disguise, that Broly was unable to learn and unlock Super Saiyan. Despite all this, the king wasn't worried. He would find a way to take care of Broly once the invasion was over. The king is surprised to learn that cooler force ships are heading straight towards them. King Vegeta gasped. 
gasps, demanding to know how much time there is left, as the scout replies that there's only an hour. They were fighting for their lives and their home. Today, the Saiyan warriors will prove their superiority and eliminate the last of their enemies. They will be slaves no more, only masters of the universe. Shortly after his speech, King Vegeta and the Saiyan army watches on as a massive ship envelops the sky. It lands, and entire platoons of soldiers emerge. From the ship, Cooler steps out with a smug expression. The two kings stare each other down. Let it be known that the Saiyans are indeed merciful. I will only give you one chance to stand down now and bow before me. Surrender your soldiers and your resources to me. If you acknowledge the Saiyans are far superior, you may continue to live in our service. Ha! <laughs> Oh, I never knew the Saiyans had a sense of humor. I hadn't had a good laugh in ages. I will do no such thing. How about this for a counteroffer? Give up now, and I will make your deaths quick and painless. Sound like a good deal, don't you think, monkey? Huh. <sighs> I refuse. Then it seems we have reached an impasse. You know as well as I do, there's only one option left. Right? Fine. I was secretly hoping it would come to this. Let there be war. Allow me to show you why Saiyans are the mightiest warrior race. I command you, my people, attack. Huh, <laughs> that's the spirit. Onward, my armored legion. Eradicate the Saiyans once and for all. The war to decide the fate of the Saiyans had begun. The battle was kicked off by the Prince Vegeta, who ordered his squad to unleash their Super Saiyan aura. Vegeta, Nappa, Raditz, Bardock, Tora, Fasha, Shugesh, and Borgos become Super Saiyans. The greatest team of warriors in Saiyan history had awakened. The Super Saiyans are able to easily handle most of Cooler's Legion, wiping out waves and waves of soldiers as the rest of the army advances. Not even Cooler's armored squadron stands a chance. They attempt to control the Super Saiyans, but are torn apart by Raditz and Nappa. Bardock winces at what he sees. He had hoped to never be part of another bloodbath like this again. Here he was, killing once more. Although, what worries him more was Cooler. Had they were trained enough to surpass him? In the distance, Cooler sighs as he receives a report from his army, suffering devastating losses. It seems that if he wanted something done right, he'd have to do it himself. Cooler bolts up into his final form. It was time to show these pitiful monkeys what real strength was. As King Vegeta yells out to his army to advance, he sees something heading towards him at incredible speed. His eyes widen as Cooler approaches the king, his foot outstretched. King Vegeta Vegeta barely has enough time to transform into a Super Saiyan as Cooler crashes his heels against his chest. King Vegeta is crushed into the stone beneath, his eyes nearly whiting out. Prince Vegeta orders his squad to assist the King as the Super Saiyan rushes over to Cooler. The Saiyans swarm around him, locking him down in a barrage of Ki Blast that shakes the entire planet beneath. However, it was useless as Cooler managed to tank it without any worries. Cooler declares that it's time for the slaughter to begin. One by one, Cooler systematically wipes out every single Super Saiyan from sight. The only ones who remained are Prince Vegeta and Bardock. Bardock sees Cooler ready to launch a death beam at Raditz as his anger erupts, once again entering Super Saiyan 2. Bardock charges at Cooler, with Prince Vegeta following behind. Vegeta, upset upon seeing the Super Saiyan 2 state, reminded him how much further ahead the old man was. No matter what, he would surpass him by defeating Cooler himself as an honor Onslaught of kicks and punches strike the Space Emperor. He chuckles in amusement. Cooler is impressed at Bardock's growth. He was certainly stronger than he was on Planet Serial. This only means he has to use a slightly more power. Perhaps 50% would suffice? A cold chill went down Bardock in Vegeta's spine. He had to be bluffing, right? There's no way he was holding back this much. Cooler catches Vegeta's punch and Bardock's kick with ease. His muscles bulge out once more. As he crushes Vegeta's hand, the Prince roars in pain as Cooler smacks him into Bardock. The Emperor's aura expands as he rockets towards the planet, slamming both Saiyans into the dirt and pressing down. The two were sent hurling through the surface of the planet until they crashed into the castle, causing it to crumble down. Cooler laughs maniacally. 
So much for these so-called Super Saiyans. Without the support of them, Cooler's Legion manages to regroup and launch a counterattack. They push back the Saiyan army using the momentum provided by their lord to get an advantage. Without their king to give any orders, nor the Super Saiyans to support them, the army was pushed to the brink. Was this the end? As Cooler gloats with glee, he orders his men to fire. The injured Bardock closes his eyes, ready to accept his end, but it doesn't come. Instead, he hears what sounds like clinging metal. He opens his eyes as his mouth drops, standing in front of him was none other than Trunks, his sword unsheathed as he deflected the volley of blaster fire back at the Legion. Trunks points his sword at Cooler in determined defiance. Cooler, this war is over. I won't allow you to kill anyone else. Again, you Saiyans and your jokes. Do you really think you can stop me on your own, boy? You and what army? Heh, <laughs> funny you'd mention that, because I've got an army right here. What? Through the smoke and ashes that fill the skies, an armada of ships appear overhead, each one embezzled with the symbol of the Galactic Patrol. Cooler is shocked. How did the filthy Saiyans get assistance from the Galactic Patrol? Leading the patrollers was a single ship with the word so many people were desperate to see, hope. Back on Earth, Dr. Briefs had told Trunks all about his old friend, Jacko and request that he find him if he needed help. Thanks to Oatmeal, it didn't take long to find the Galactic Patrol headquarters. And though they weren't trusted at first, they listened to Trunks' plea of help. If they didn't intervene in this war, the Saiyans would be eradicated, and Cooler would rule the universe. This would be their chance to save the Saiyans and reform them, to eliminate the Cold Clan's evil once and for all. With Trunks' passionate pleas, as well as being vouched for by Jacko, the Galactic King agreed to offer his support. In the present, the Galactic Patrol ships fire their blaster cannons at Cooler's Legion as Trunks burst into Super Saiyan 2. It was time to settle things with Cooler once and for all. The two strongest beings in the universe clash, their colliding auras generating lightning that strikes across the wasteland. The gap in power between the two was far more than it was before. Not only that, Granola was providing support to his friend as he fired sniper shots at Cooler's vital points. But the battle could go either way. Gine rushes over to help her husband, as the heaters tell her to pick up Bardock and get out of the way. Bardock can't believe he's being saved by the heaters of all people, but he accepts it. If a murderous conqueror like him could change, then so could they. Oil and Maki, that they can go all out here, taking off their necklaces, their muscle mass growing tremendously, and their teeth turning into fangs, horns growing from their heads, and their eyes going blank. The heaters enter their uncontrollable berserk state, the same form gas used before his battle against Bardock and Trunks. The siblings rush towards the incoming soldiers, defeating everyone in their path. As Gine takes Bardock away from the battlefield, they reunite with Monaito. The old Namekian says that he may not be able to fight, but he can help in his own way as he heals Bardock. The trio look on at the violence unfolding before them. This really was a war zone. There were heavy losses on all sides, yet Bardock was aware that they were still only alive because of Trunks. If Trunks loses, then Planet Vegeta is doomed. As the Saiyan medics recover the Super Saiyan squad and King Vegeta, they too look at the battlefield. King Vegeta sweats bullets, his anxiety reaching its peak. Not only was the Galactic Patrol here, but so was that blasted Trunks, and Cooler was still alive. Without any more hesitation, King Vegeta takes out his communicator as he summons Broly. It was time to wipe out the board completely. The roar of an Ozaru is heard as a small figure soars towards Cooler, interrupting the fight as Cooler is punished right in the gut. For the first time in his life, Cooler is caught off guard and left completely winded. Furious, Cooler turns his attention to Broly, eager to kill this brat. Trunks dashes in to support Broly, although he can't do much. Broly was barely restraining himself. Bardock, Gine, and Monaito arrive at the back line of the Saiyan army to provide help to the wounded. King Vegeta is reluctant to receive assistance from the withered Slugman, but after seeing how potent Monaito's healing was, he allows it. King Vegeta and the Super Saiyans are healed gaining a massive Zenkai boost. After all, they had all just come back from the brink of death. King Vegeta, his son, and the rest charged their key, speeding towards Cooler with the intent to kill. The cold was barely able to handle the unrelenting assault. These Super Saiyans were barely able to hurt him before, but now he was really feeling the pain. 
Bardock yells at everyone to keep on attacking. They are winning. It was now or never. As Broly pummeled Cooler, every Super Saiyan charged their strongest attack. Mouth beams, riot javelins, galley guns, and Masenkos strike Cooler in a massive explosion. At first, everyone thought they had won. However, Trunks feels something in the air as he yells at the squad to step back. From the dust, several massive death beams fly out. Bardock, Trunks, Broly, Prince Vegeta are barely able to dodge the incoming attacks. Raditz, Nappa, Bardock Squad, and King Vegeta receive the full brunt of the blasts, their bodies getting pierced as they cough off blood. They each fall out of Super Saiyan as they plunted down to the ground. Cooler hovers out of the dust cloud, his entire body covered in wounds and blood, yet he survived as he was absolutely livid. Cooler declares that he's had enough of these games. He would use 100% of his power to bring this war to an end. Cooler bolts towards Trunks, punching him in the stomach and wrapping his tail around his neck. In an instant, he appears before the Prince and Bardock, elbowing them in the back of the head. Cooler blasts the pair and throws Trunks onto the ground as he raises his hand. An explosion of ki erupts from beneath them, scattering everyone and utterly destroying the battlefield. The blast was so intense, Broly temporarily leaves his wrathful state as he looks around at the carnage. Cooler approaches the boy as Broly prepares to defend himself. However, Cooler raises his hand. He doesn't want to fight him anymore. Now that he can clearly look at him, he recognizes him from the reports. He was King Vegeta's secret weapon, his ace the hole. He asks the young boy why he works for that foolish king as Broly quietly replies. Because my father told me to. Cooler grins gleefully. Was that really true? When was the last time he had seen his father or even talked to him? Broly looks at the ground in confusion. From the rubble below, King Vegeta sees what's happening as he starts to panic. He yells desperately at Broly not to listen to him, but it's too late. Cooler motions to one of his minions to come over, requested him to hand over their scouter as Cooler clicks a few buttons in it. You know, Broly. My forces intercepted several encrypted messages from the Saiyan's receivers. I believe you'd be very interested in hearing these messages for yourself. Wouldn't you like to know the truth about your father, young Broly? No, stop it. Put the scouter down, Broly. That's an order, Broly. With mounting curiosity, Broly grabs the scouter. He presses on it, and the recording starts to play. Several months ago, King Vegeta had sent Prince Vegeta and his squad to a far-off, distant planet to retrieve Broly. A few years ago, the king had banished Broly as he was afraid of his power. However, now that he was aware of the existence of the Super Saiyans and the defeat of Frieza, King Vegeta wanted to have a powerful weapon under his control. When they landed on Vampa, the prince and his squad encounter Paragus alone in a cave. The man was shocked to see the Saiyans, especially the prince. However, before he could call out for Broly, Paragus was immediately killed by a single punch from Vegeta. They had received orders to retrieve Broly no one else. When Broly returned to the cave with more beetle eggs, he was surprised to see three strangers. Nappa and Raditz convinced Broly that they had come to rescue him and his father. They were sorely missed back home. When Broly asked where his father was, Nappa said that he was already on his way to planet Vegeta. He said he would meet him there very soon. Without much convincing, Broly departs planet Vampa with Vegeta's squad, not realizing his father's tragic fate. The final words from the scouter comes from King Vegeta as he tells his son that they will use Broly as much as they desire until they have no more use for him. As the scouter's recording ends, Broly can only shake in rage. His father was murdered, the king and his so-called saviors had lied to him, and they planned to get rid of him when they didn't need him anymore. Broly grabs his head, screaming into heavens as his hair flares up into a golden hue. Broly's power soars uncontrollably, unlocking Super Saiyan, unleashing it to the horror of everyone watching, except for Cooler, who merely laughed. This Saiyan would do his dirty work for him now, and destroy the planet. He wouldn't even have to lift a finger. Broly's rage explodes as his green aura fractures into multiple key bullets. The incoming blasts destroy nearby villages as the various factions run for their lives. Bardock is barely able to push Raditz out of the way of an incoming attack, but Nappa and the King aren't so lucky. In an instant, they're both incinerated as all that remains are ashes. Despite their injuries, Bardock and Trunks stand back up. Bardock tells Trunks to leave the kid to him as Trunks nods. He'll deal with Cooler. 
The pair smile as they burst once more into Super Saiyan 2, fist bumping each other as they raise their key, launching towards their opponents. Granola rises from the ashes, unwilling to allow his friends to fight alone. At this time, Prince Vegeta stands back up, unwilling to let Bardock and Trunks take the glory for themselves. He will be the one to defeat Broly. It will be the mighty Prince Vegeta that proves himself to be the greatest Super Saiyan in history. Both young warriors head off to face their destinies. As Bardock and Prince Vegeta attempt to stop Broly's rampage, Trunks and Granola face off against Cooler. Granola attempts to fire pot shots at Cooler's vital points again, but the Emperor sees it coming, defending himself from the attacks as he fires multiple death beams his way. Granola attempts to evade the attacks, even flying out of the way, but the death beams chase him down and crash against his back. Trunks yells out a sorrowful no, his rage releasing once more. As he drops his sword and his eyes go white, the rageful Super Saiyan slams his fist against Cooler, each blow breaking something in turn. The combo ends in a powerful punch to the face, a blow so strong it shatters Cooler's face guard. The Emperor fires eye beams directly at Trunks' face, wrapping his tail once more around his neck, with an intent of breaking it. Suddenly, Granola yells at the top of his lungs as he brandishes Trunks' sword. Cooler's eyes widened in one fell swoop, his tail is cleanly cut in two. At the same time, Vegeta and Bardock use every last ounce of their strength to fight back against Broly. They combine their Raya Javelin with a Gallic Gun, the energy beams swirling together and striking Broly head on. Unfortunately, the blast only serves to anger Broly. His rage and power climb, with seemingly no end in sight. They needed a plan, but how could they distract Broly? Bardock looks over to the tailless cooler as an idea pops into his head. He yells at the prince to follow his lead as he charges towards Cooler. The pair of Super Saiyans are about to collide into the Emperor, but at the last possible moment, they separate. Broly, who had been chasing after them, crashes into the shocked Cooler as the Saiyan wails on the Emperor. The Super Saiyans descend down into the remaining of the war zone panting and exhausted. As Manito runs to heal them, Trunks asks what they can possibly do about Broly. If he continues to rampage like this, Planet Vegeta is done for. Bardock thinks for a moment and brings up an idea. Perhaps they did have a power beyond Super Saiyan. Bardock recalls the legend of a Super Saiyan God. He had brushed off the legend as a fairy tale. But if the Super Saiyan was real, then perhaps the Super Saiyan God was as well. Gine isn't sure if they can count on a legend like that, but she trusted her husband. Monaito quickly goes through his bag and takes out two Dragon Balls. Bardock nods at him, thanking him for saving them. They summon the dragon, and this catches Cooler's attention, who quickly tries to get away from Broly and approach it. They don't have much time left, and they ask the dragon to bring forth the God of Legend. But there's no such thing. It seems like all hope is lost, but the dragon continues. If five Saiyans pour their hopes and power into another, only then will the God power be brought into existence. Cooler reaches the dragon and just as it disappears, he curses and begins to attack the team. But the heaters stand in front, telling Bardock and the others to hurry it up and get it over with. They will hold him back and lead him back to Broly. Gine, Bardock, Raditz, and Vegeta gather around Trunks as they pour their key into him. Trunks feels a wave of energy flowing throughout, but he doesn't feel any different. Bardock smacks his head. He forgot they need a pure-hearted Saiyan for the ritual, and the sixth Saiyan as well. Vegeta scoffs. What a ridiculous setup for a legendary transformation. However, the Saiyans notice up above that Cooler was on his last leg, as the heaters, who were extremely hurt, finally led him back to Broly. He was about to be defeated. Vegeta and Raditz burst into Super Saiyan, telling everyone they will buy some more time as they head towards Broly. As Bardock and Gine scrabble to find another pure-hearted Saiyan, Trunks smiles brightly. Walking towards them was none other than Bardock's squad mates. They had survived after all. After receiving a short explanation, the squad was more than happy to help. And so, Bardock, Tora, Fasha, Shugesh, and Borgos gather around Trunks. They hold hands as they flare into Super Saiyans, their golden aura enveloping Trunks as he closes his eyes. Gine watches on in amazement as a burning red tone surrounds Trunks, his eyes and hair turning bright crimson. In his heart, he thanks the Dragon Balls. Trunks could feel it. He knew it now. He had become the Super Saiyan God of Legend. As Raditz, Vegeta, and Cooler are about to get vaporized, 
surprised, Broly notices a flickering flame appear in front of him. Trunks arrives in his brand new form, astonishing Vegeta and Raditz while enraging Cooler. Being saved by a Saiyan, he'd rather die. Trunks tells Broly calmly to rest. He doesn't have to let out his anger anymore. Broly roars and charges at Trunks, but each attack is effortlessly countered and dodged. Trunks thinks to himself that even if this new power was amazing, it still wasn't nearly as impressive as Broly. If he was older and received more training, just how far could he go? Trunks pulls out his sword, ready to end the madness. His sword glistens off the glare of Trunks' aura as a crimson glow surrounds the blade. Trunks concentrates his energy as various chains erupt from the sword, restraining Broly. As Broly thrashes around violently, Trunks attempts to calm Broly once more. It's over, Broly. The war is done. Look around, no one's fighting anymore except for you. I'm sorry about your father and what the king did to you. I lost my father as well. I know what it's like to have your loved ones ripped away from you, but you don't have to succumb to the rage. You don't have to let it control you. Please, Broly, I want to be your friend. Let me help you. You're not alone. Broly's eyes fixate on Trunks, staring into his fiery yet tranquil energy. It was almost as if their spirits were connected, and Broly could understand everything Trunks was saying as true. The sadness, the rage, the fear, the doubt, and the hope. All of it were there for Broly to see. With the effect of the God Bind in place, Broly was finally able to calm down and return to his normal self. Broly nearly collapsed, but Trunks managed to catch him. Raditz asks out loud if this means it's over. However, as he says this, the Saiyan feels an intense heat slowly rising from above. Trunks and the rest of the survivors turn their heads towards the sky to see Cooler holding up an enormous supernova. Cooler laughs maniacally. He refused to be beaten by a bunch of monkeys. In the palm of his hand was all his power, a force capable of wiping out entire galaxies. Cooler declares that the Saiyan race shall be exterminated and he launched the supernova. As the remaining soldiers of every army scramble in a feeble attempt to save their lives, Trunks looks up at the incoming supernova with a distinct feeling of calmness. He knew he could stop this, no problem. He asks Raditz to hold on to Broly as he pulls out his sword one last time. He takes a deep breath and in a single motion he slices the super Supernova in half. Rather than exploding, the massive key ball turns bright red before dissipating into a brilliant crimson sparkle. For the first time in his life, Cooler feels immense fear. Every instinct in his body tells him to run away and never come back. Yet, before he even has a chance to retreat, Trunks appears above him with a sword overhead. Cooler! Wait! No! In a single slash, Cooler is cut down the middle followed by a series of consecutive spectacular slices. Trunks points out his palm, blasting away the remains of Cooler. It was done. Finally, the war was over. As Trunks looked around, he saw the immense amount of destruction surrounding him. The castle was destroyed, the village decimated, and the ground beneath them crashed beyond belief. Yet, Planet Vegeta still stood. Trunks approaches the Saiyans as everyone cheers for him, thanking their saviors for saving them once again. The Galactic Patrol and Monaito were doing their best to treat the injured, with the Elder Namekian nearly collapsing from exhaustion. But he was glad to have helped. The Galactic Patrol thanks Trunks for his assistance but Trunks shakes his head. He should be thanking them for saving so many people. As the Galactic Patrol arrest the rest of Cooler's army, one of the senior agents eyes the Saiyans. Should they be arrested too? The Galactic King is called, as Trunks requests the patrol not to arrest the Saiyans. Not all of them have hurt anyone, and they can still change. The Galactic King agrees, but under one condition. The Saiyans would be constantly supervised to make sure they don't invade any new planets out there. Perhaps Agent Miras could be assigned to Planet Vegeta, once he returns from his far-off mission. Trunks thanks the king profusely for his generosity, but the king reminds him that he saved the universe from the Cold Clan. It's the least they can do. As the Galactic Patrol leaves, the Saiyan begin their long road of recovery. Reconstruction efforts were tough, but relatively quick. The entire Saiyan race was united and eager to rebuild their lives. With King Vegeta dead, it was expected for Prince Vegeta to take his father's place as a ruler. However, the prince surprised everyone by declaring that he had no idea intention to rule, not yet at least. Not when there were other Saiyans more powerful than himself. He would go out into the universe and train so that one day he could be strong enough to reclaim the throne. And with that, Vegeta blasted off into space as Raditz followed close behind. 
Trunks was asked by many to be their new king, but he politely declined. He wasn't going to stay there forever. As a result, it was decided that Bardock, as the greatest Saiyan of his generation, would be the king. Bardock wasn't fond of this new sudden promotion. He thought being a king was such a drag. However, he also knew there was no one else better fit for the job. Besides, with Guinea there to support him, he thought the job wouldn't be too bad. On the day of Bardock's coronation, the Saiyans gather around Guinea's rebuilt butcher shop. Bardock refused to live in a gaudy castle, insisting that the funds be used in reconstruction efforts instead. Bardock announces his first declaration as a king to be that, with the Cold Clan and the late King Vegeta gone, it was time for a new era of the Saiyans to begin. The Saiyans would no longer conquer planets. Instead, they would assist the Galactic Patrol in keeping peace across the galaxy. Agent Miras walked up to King Bardock and shook his hand, eager to start this new relationship and hopeful that it would last for generations to come. In the crowd, Oiled and Maki cheer as they stand wearing new uniforms after being pardoned for their crimes. The remaining heaters decided to join the Galactic Patrol after hearing how they offered pretty good salary and benefits. The same caste system was abolished, and along with the announcement of their deal with the Galactic Patrol, many Saiyan elites and warriors were discontent with the new society. However, any rumblings of a rebellion were quickly dashed by King Bardock, as King Bardock made it clear that anyone who was unhappy with his decision should take him up in a fight. Any attempts to overthrow the king were quickly thwarted by Granola, who stayed on planet Vegeta with Monaito as he became King Bardock's apprentice. Monaito and himself had wished for planet Serial to be brought back, but decided to stay there. In a way, Monaito took on the role of Kami while on planet Vegeta, with planet Vegeta having their own set of Dragon Balls. And, well, Broly, he lived with Bardock and Gine. Although he would train to control his power and anger, he didn't want to fight, and Bardock was fine with that. It seemed like he was much more interested in baking treats with Gine, that he was quite a powerful opponent and always talked about being eager to fight Kakarot once he was old enough. Soon, the Saiyans started to change. Their reputation as cold-blooded murderers were slowly shifting into that of peacekeepers who would fight for those who couldn't defend themselves. And soon, King Bardock declared that Planet Vegeta would be renamed to the new Planet Sadala, the name of their original home planet. The crowds erupted into applause, and soon after, many Saiyans from different walks of life could party, laugh, and enjoy themselves. Trunks was delighted to see how far they had all come. He thinks back to his first time arriving on the planet and how dreary and oppressive the atmosphere was. Now, people were smiling and bright colors were everywhere. The streets were alive. It was time. Trunks could feel it. He couldn't stay there anymore. He had to go home. Later that night, Trunks headed over to the outskirts of the village. This was the same place his time machine had landed when he first arrived. It was only fitting it'd be where he left. However, he hears the voice of someone familiar calling out to him. Hey, Trunks, you can't can't expect to leave without saying anything, right? Trunks turned around to see Bardock along with Gine, Little Kakarot, Broly Granola, Monaito, Oil, and Maki. Trunks was embarrassed that he got caught, but nonetheless, glad to see them one last time. Sorry, I didn't want to bother anyone at the festival. Damn, kid. Even though you're the almighty Super Saiyan God, you still don't have a clue about how people think, huh? Trunks laughs as his friends say goodbye. Oil and Maki are surprisingly emotional, thanking Trunks for saving them back on planet Serial and changing their lives. Monaito expressed his gratitude for saving his and Granolas. He was a hero through and through. More than that, he was eternally grateful for keeping his promise and staying friends with Granola. It means more to him than he could ever imagine. Gine hugs Trunks tearfully, thanking him for giving her family a better future. If he ever gets lonely, he's welcome to come back to their home. Broly mutters a quiet thank you as he tugs onto Gine's leg. Bardock extends his hand out to Trunks, smiling. They shake hands as both men look at each other fondly. Thank you for reaching out to me when you did. You changed my life, all of you. I'll never be able to repay you for what you've done for me. Hey, that's my line. It's no exaggeration to say that you saved the entire Saiyan race time and time again. You helped us all learn to achieve Super Saiyan, carved a new path. You're my friend, Trunks, and a man I respect. Whatever it is you face, I know you'll take care of it with no problem. Safe travels. I hope we meet again. Finally, all that was left was Granola. The young boy was crying profusely, asking Trunks if he really had to go. He bends down and puts his hand on Granola's shoulder. Even if we're apart, that doesn't mean we won't see each other again. No matter where we are, we'll always stay connected. The memories we share bind us together. My old master once told me that long ago. And it's true, if I close my eyes and listen to my heart, I can see him. I'm sure I'll work for you too. Besides, I've got a little gift for you. Here, it's my sword. This sword means a lot to me. Promise that you'll give it back to me one day, when you become a great hero. No, oh, 
And keep an eye on Earth for me while you're at it. I feel they might need a hero sooner rather than later. Through his tears, Granola smiles and he grips onto the hilt of the sword. He promised to become a hero he could be proud of. Trunks gets into the time machine and as it ascends, he looks back at his friends waving goodbye, focusing in on the cheerful faces they had until landing on little Kakarot. It looks like I did it, mom. I saved Goku. I think I understand what you meant back then, when I asked you why Goku was so important. Just by being with his family, I felt so much hope, like I knew everything will turn out okay. They'll be alright. I believe in them. In a flash, the time machine disappears. We now return to the future timeline as 17 and 18 were in the middle of attacking a group of survivors. Just as they're about to blast them away, Trunks appears in front of them with a piercing glare. It's over, androids. I'm here to stop you once and for all. Oh, is that right? You may have a little bit more muscle than before, but do you really think you can do anything to us? Trunks closes his eyes as the camera zooms in on his face. He takes a deep breath, his eyes bolt open, revealing a bright crimson color. I don't know, let's find out. Thanks for watching everyone, and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss the best Dragon Ball What Ifs out there.